Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is game user settings? The anti-aliasing quality node. Let's switch back over to our example here. And this is one of those nodes where easy to explain, kind of hard to show off an example because you need a really specific example to show off exactly how it works because anti-aliasing itself is very tricky. Let me cover the node. Let me cover what it does and explain why you might use it. So the node itself is pretty simple. It's one of our standard quality nodes. We pull it off of game user settings, type in anti-alias, and we have a getter and a setter. The getter is going to return back 0 through 3, and the setter is going to take a 0 through 3. All that's going to do is adjust the post-processing AA quality. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at the instructions inside Epic's documentation. There is a quality setting called R, which is render dot post process A quality. And basically it's going to affect the quality of whichever anti-aliasing method you're using. If you're using FXAA or temporal AA or I don't actually know if it matters for MSAA once a forward renderer gets in, but it might. I'm just going to assume anything with post processing is going to be affected. Any of the AAs. Anyways, a value of zero is basically going to disable AA. However, depending on the settings you've set up, which I can show you in my document if I can find where it went to, you may actually have different things happen. Let me show you that right here. So this is what happens when you change your AA between 0, 1, 2, and 3. It sets the r.postprocess quality values to 0, 2, 3, and 4. Now, depending on if you're using FXAA or Temporal AA, it's going to change the quality of it. The higher the value, the better the quality, the more performance it takes. It's honestly just as simple as that. And as you can see here, the effects of values 2, 4, and 6 can be seen in the above images for smoothing of jagged edges. That's basically what AA does. It applies smoothing. It takes away the sharpness of your edges right here, as you can see, which let's see if we can make it bigger takes away your sharpness of these edges and starts smoothing them out by basically blurring them. That's what anti-aliasing does. But if you don't have a really good example of it, it's hard to see. And also it depends on which AA version you're using. So let me show you why I meant it's going to be hard to show you. Let's run through my example here. And as you can see, I kind of have some sharp edges on these edges here, some sharp edges on my sphere, and I have some sharp edges on this cube. Right now my anti-aliasing is at low. If I said to epic and hit apply, well, we still kind of have some sharp edges. They're a little bit better. They're not near as sharp. We'll go back to low and hit apply. You can see some more stair stepping here. Eh, let's see here, let's make this easier. Play this in a standalone game window. Pop it up. Let's full screen it. Let's apply 1080, there we go. And let's go ahead and turn everything on low and let's look at it again. So on low, you can see we have some stair stepping here and some jagged edges here. On epic anti-aliasing, you can see it smooths it out a little bit. So that's what anti-aliasing does, but it's gonna be dependent on which anti-aliasing you're using. Like I said, we have FXAA and temporal AA right now. And in the future with the forward renderer, we're gonna have MSAA. So you're going to go ahead and have different values, different methods. The reason why I mentioned this is complicated is the AA method you use is dependent on your game and the quality setting you use. So when we look at our documentation here, and we look at our default values in here, and then we look at our file, and we look at our default values, this is dependent on the game. If you basically just want to give your player the ability to have some performance back, Feel free to put this node in as it is by default, and it's going to work, and they'll get a little bit of performance. They'll trade off sharpness and jaggies for smoothness and uh, less performance, basically. Once you're advanced enough to know what you're using, you can go in and tweak it as is. But long story short, it makes things less jaggy. This is going to go and wrap up the video. As you can see, it's basically going to take in a 0 through 3. 
it's going to change the AA post-processing value. But remember, it's not changing it in a finite number. You're not going to go like, okay, now it's 0.4, it's 10%. It's going to change these settings in your base I and I, which can be adjusted if you want to have better quality. And again, it's also going to be affected based on which type of AA you're running to determine what those values do.